Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, BMB Flyer here. This is the example of what we're going to achieve today using Citadel contrast paints. Particularly, we're going to use blue in order to get this blue gray effect on this Donegal Guards commando. We'll be using Achillean Green from their contrast line. But first you're going to need to prime your miniature. I use this gloss uh, Krylon Fusion for plastic. You can also use GW's products if you wish. You want a smooth finish and the gloss is what helps interact with the paint. There may be some other brands that work, but this is what I've used. Achillean Green will look turquoise unless we put a gray base coat underneath it. In order to get that blue-gray color, we're going to use this Ceram Coat Rain Gray. It's a basically a craft paint you can get from Target or hobby stores. I've thinned mine down with a little bit of water, and I'm going to apply it using a brush. Uh, synthetic brush is fine. I'm going to make sure I get in all the cracks and crevices and get a nice smooth base coat. I'm going to do two coats with this. Once I've let that first coat completely dry, I'm going to come back and touch up any areas I may have missed. And then I'm going to apply an overall thin coat over the entire miniature just to make everything smooth and a nice base for our colored transparent paint that we're going to put over the top of this. Now that our gray base coat is completely dry, we're ready for contrast paint. There's a couple things you want to remember when using contrast paints that I've found. Have a paper towel on hand, have a good size synthetic brush. I don't want to use a natural hair brush because this contrast paint can dry quickly and you may ruin it. So I've used some cheap ones here that I've got from a hobby store. Another thing about contrast paint you want to look out for is the fact that it settles really, really quickly. I found that this little layer that you get on the bottom of these paints forms pretty pretty quick. So you want to shake those up every time you use them. I throw a little piece of sprue in the bottom to agitate them and make sure that's all mixed up. Make sure you shake them every time you open up the pot. With the paint thoroughly mixed, it's time to start applying. Load your brush up pretty well and I like to start at the top as I'm going to start working this paint into every little spot. Don't trust that it's just going to flow into or the capillary action is going to carry it where you think it might work. It's going to need to be brushed on in every spot. You'll find that you'll have places that you missed. And you do need to be pretty meticulous about ensuring that you get those spots early on. I'm just making sure it's going into the grooves and the cracks and crevices. I'm not using a lot of brush pressure, and it doesn't really splatter that much, but you should always have something there to protect you from spills and things like that. I'm going to work the paint downward because when the miniature is ready to dry, gravity is going to kind of take some stuff and let it flow to the bottom. So I want to kind of go heavy first on the top and then pull it downward so I don't end up with just big puddles on the on the feet. And if you do get that, that's what the paper towel is for. Use your brush to wick away any excess and you can even do that in between coats. Another thing I like to do is after I get about halfway done with a miniature, I want to stop and look at where I've got my paint already applied. I'm going to double check and make sure I've got up into those little hard to reach areas, maybe smooth out some of the buildup of paint that's already started to happen. And then I'm looking to kind of avoid some pooling that might start to occur, areas that I see that are susceptible to that. And I'll either spread some of the paint out or I'll just, like I said, wick it away using the paper towel. You'll want to keep checking this as you're applying. You have a few minutes of work time. It will dry fairly quickly to the point where if you work too much with it, you'll get the coffee staining. You can kind of cheat that a little bit using a little bit of extra paint on your brush. If you have the medium that they sell, the technical contrast medium, that's also a way to go back and smooth it out. But you really don't want to have to mess with it after the first application. It doesn't mean you've ruined it if you get some pooling here or there, but you just want to try to avoid a whole lot of it, especially on the highest areas where you know that they would be lighter versus having a shadow or would be a recessed area that would probably have direct light on it. So I'm just picking away little pieces here and there that I want to thin the paint out. Once you've got your miniature completely covered, Go back again, just like you did before, and look for any areas you may have missed. This is the time you really want to catch those. Otherwise, it can be a lot harder to cover up or to blend into the rest of the paint. I'm also letting that paint settle. I try to keep it upright so that the paint flows downward as it, as it would as it sits there to dry. And I'm just looking for areas to wick away any excess and clean up at this point. Once it's done, let it dry for at least 45 minutes to an hour. You don't want to mess with it until then. As you can see here, I've applied some brown onto the base to kind of start going my basing routine while I'm teaching this example here. I've got some blue-gray that we're going to dry brush over the top of this blue to raise those accented areas and show the highlights. Now, you don't have to do this. I just think it looks a lot better. Plus, the blue-gray offsets the blue over the gray that we're already doing. So I think it ends up getting a really nice result for very little effort. I'm just using a 
medium sized synthetic brush that I like to use for dry brushing, loading up the paint, and then brushing it off onto the paper towel to deload most of the paint. Using a light brush pressure, starting at the top down, I'm just going to run the bristles over the edges, trying to keep them perpendicular or a slight angle to catch the highest points of each part of the model. You can do as little or as much of this as you wish. The idea is to accent the areas that would catch the most light. What you want to avoid with this process is drying out the paint and caking it on so much that you start to get raised rough surface areas. You really don't have a high chance of doing that as long as you use light brush pressure and don't try to go too much too quickly. It really is a what you prefer type of style. I tend to just put a little bit on there and treat it as a accent versus trying to change the entire color of the model. Once you've finished putting on these highlights with the dry brushing step to your liking, it's time to move on to details. I'm going to start out with some oily steel to set some details off on this miniature. Gun barrels, jump jets, hands, leg joints, things like that. I'm going to use a smaller synthetic brush, use a little bit of water to thin the paint, and just apply it directly onto the areas that you want to have silver. Take your time with this. If you make a mistake, try to clean it up quickly. You can use a brush with some water on it or a paper towel. You can even use your finger to wipe it away. But because the contrast paint doesn't really have an easy touch-up method, you really want to pay close attention during this time. If you make a mistake, that's okay. You may be able to, to repair it a little bit or maybe make a certain area a different color to fix it. But just keep that in mind that if you get a little too quick and a little bit careless, you can have a lot of work to fix things. I'm just going to take my time, pick the things out I want to have different colors. Sometimes I like to use black or charcoal grays and things like that to also add details and accents. Once you're happy with the amount of details you've added, we'll add a wash to the metallics and other areas to add some shading. I'm using Nuln Oil, which is a black wash. You can use any kind you want. I did want to point out that I just so happen to be using the gloss version. If you don't seal your miniature with a matte spray, you don't want to use a gloss because it's going to look weird next to the much more satin and semi-matte color that the contrast paints tend to, to achieve when they're dry. So just keep that in mind. I didn't want to point that out just in case you bought the same thing I had. Look out for that. Apply the wash to any areas you want to darken and have more shadows, avoiding the same thing you avoided with the contrast paint, wicking away pooling, using a paper towel, and going back and making sure you got all the areas you wanted and let it dry completely if you're going to do multiple layers or add more details. I'm just showing what I like to do on my bases. I use Vallejo's Surface Primer Black to run a black edge around all of my hex bases. Now I do at least two coats. The first layer is just to make sure everything is coated and the second layer will even everything out. Take your time, make sure you don't have any air bubbles or bits from the base or any uh, flocking or anything like that mixed in and I'm using a really just garbage synthetic brush on this because that that primer can really chew away your brushes so don't use a nice one on this. Make sure you let it dry in between coats just like you would any other paint. I really think it helps offset the overall appearance of a base by having a little bit of a separation between the colored areas and the table. But your preference, if you wish to have brown or have your flocking go over the edge, that's completely up to you. This is just what I like to do and I wanted to show this step. Another little quick step I wanted to show is what I'm going to do on the cockpit. Grab a dark red, in this case I'm using scarlet, an orange, I'm using troll slayer, and then a white or an ivory. You're going to just grab these three paints, put them all in your palette or have them all ready to go. Use a little bit of water and a nice detail brush you have, and I'm going to take a fairly light thin coat of that scarlet red and put it on the area I want to define as my cockpit. Now I didn't show that step but I already went over that area with a charcoal gray. You can use black or whatever you choose there but you want to have some sort of dark color. While I'm letting that dry I want to detail these laser barrels. I've grabbed scorpion green. And I'm just going to use a little bit of that to use as a I guess a quick lens effect on the three laser barrels that stick out of the chest. It'll take a couple of coats because I'm just going right over the silver and I haven't put any white or any other lighter color underneath it. But this is just something you can do real quickly and keep it real neat and effective 
also at the same time maximizing your time as you paint because this will get done relatively quickly while you're waiting for something else to dry. I'm just going to take the tip of the brush and touch the ends of those barrels and let them dry until I get a nice effect that looks like the focusing lens of the end of a laser. And since I already had it out on my palette, I'm going to take a little bit of that scarlet and throw it in the large laser barrel and do the same technique to add a little bit of color to that weapon. Now that the area on the cockpit is mostly dry, I'm going to add a little bit of water in with that orange, thin it out, and get a nice thin, almost a glaze consistency. You can see me kind of thinning it out. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a dot on there and let it kind of do its work with the red. It's not going to be perfect. It's, we're not looking to do some sort of perfect blend, but we want to put a accent color on top of that red and the orange will help do that. And since it's got some nice transparency, it'll actually get a decent blend without you doing anything other than touching it to the black and the red. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the ivory that I've got, mix some orange in, and I don't have to work quickly on this, but I like to have the paint still be wet as I'm blending it in and just touch. I'm going to pick one side here and place a little bit of that on the edge that I know was going to catch the light. And now I'm getting a nice reflection effect with hardly any work. You can go back and add a little bit of orange to blend back if you have working with a larger area. Of course, I'm working with a really small area, so you're not going to be able to see too many changes. And you can take it all the way back to the red as well if you want, or even the black or the dark charcoal that you used to add a little bit more variance between the dark to the colored to the light reflection. And here I am just touching that up. Once you're happy with it, just let it be. Don't try to keep changing it. I've got my second coat of primer around the base. I've added a little white detail to the antenna, and then I'm going to put some flock and a few decals on to finish this up before I put a matte sealant. Here you can see the final product. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Follow us on Facebook. Camo Specs Online. Let us know what you think. Any questions in the comments? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.